Here we go. Today, I'm going to attempt to smoke some um, beef short ribs. And I got them out and I, I trimmed some of the fat on some of it. Um, I'm always worried about trimming too much of that off because some of it almost seems like that's what the top layer is, like this one here. I don't know if you can see that. It's like all fat. If I trim that off, there's not going to be anything left. Anyway, so I'm going to. I'm going to salt these right now because um, I should have done this last night and I didn't. And I just realized they need to sit with the salt on them for a while. Uh, so I'm going to salt them and let them sit in the fridge for like uh, like an hour or two. Meat fingers. I'm going to use it just right there because I can use um, sea salt. I'm just going to put salt all over And this is going to be an all, another all day affair. Kind of like my last one. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to eat these. Until tomorrow. Because they're pretty thick. And then I guess they, they're going to take a while. So I'm salting up. Uh, all around the edges, all the surfaces. I'll have to clean my salt thing off when I'm done with this. Can I get the bottom? All right. But check this out though. Look at the fat in that. That's going to be a good one. Done. And I got these from uh, Tennessee Grass-Fed Farm. Yeah, I get most of my meat from there. Sometimes I get it from white oak pastures, but this is from Tennessee Grass-Fed. And this is, um, they're really good. They're like a local farm. And they sent me a complimentary t-shirt being such a good customer. All right, I think I got them all. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, they're salted. And this is for later, I'll, I'll show you. I made like a little, kind of a rub, not a rub, well, I guess you could call it that. It's a mixture. It's mostly just salt, black pepper. It's got some of the smoked salt in there too. But this is, uh, this is gonna be, this is the olive oil. Once this sits for an hour or two with the salt, I'll bring it back out, I'll, I'll wipe it with the olive oil, and then we'll put this on it, and then that's when we'll throw it in the smoke. Uh, so, that's it, this is ready for the fridge. Oh, and I, I wanted to show you my little freezer bag. This is some of the fat that I trimmed, so later, when we're all done eating all that juicy meat, what I'll do is throw the bone pack in here with this and throw it in the freezer. And at some point, we'll make some more bone broth. And I'll have these bones, I'll have that fat, like all that extra. Like, like if I'm eating a big fat steak and I can't finish the, the fat around the edge, I'll throw it in a baggie. I'll, get, you know, I'll keep one of these in the freezer. And that all gets added to my bone broth mixture. My head's getting cut off, isn't it? All right, I'm going to pause this and I'll be back. All right. Uh, God, I got sidetracked today. I forgot I had this podcast I was supposed to do. So um, this has been in the refrigerator. I put it in there around 12.30. It's 3.30. So uh, I'm definitely not going to be eating these today. But it gave it time to sit with the salt. 
So it's just been salted. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna add the olive oil. I'm gonna add the olive oil, and I made this little mix. Um, I use this on like burgers sometimes too. It's not quite like the. It's close to like the blackening season I use on the fish, but it doesn't have. Um, it's more like just straight black pepper, sea salt. I did put a little bit of the smoke salt in here too, the hickory smoke salt. Um, and it's got these other peppers, chipotle, cayenne, um, smoked paprika. And the only other things that I, oh, and garlic, garlic powder, the roasted garlic powder. And I um, gave a few twists of uh, lemon pepper. And one other thing, I can't remember. But anyway, that's kind of basic. So this is sort of what considered a rub, I guess, but I'm not gonna do a whole lot because I'm, I'm not a fan of like a heavy crust. Um, just just to add a little, oops, what am I doing? I forgot, the, I forgot this stuff. Okay, first we'll do the uh, olive oil. And I hope I didn't make a mistake by not taking the fat off some of these. It's mostly that one and this one. It's just such, such a heavy layer. But the thing was, I, I started to peel it off. Well, you could tell it was kind of soft. I'd be like, man, when that gets cooked, that's going to be good. So I didn't want to mess with that. Well, we'll see if it backfires. These are going to be good. I ordered... I've, I've gotten um, the, the beef short ribs from, from uh, Tennessee Grass Fed before. Um, these aren't actual grass feds, though. The, the ones I had before were, and there wasn't a whole lot of meat on them. These are their Wagyu versions. And, uh, I mean, can you see that? Look, look at the marbling in there. That's going to be like, look at this. That's going to be amazing when it's done. I can't wait. I'm just bummed. You know, I, you know, I do this intermittent fasting, so I have like a eating window. And um, since I didn't start until, uh, I'm not going to have my coffee. About, about 1.30, I can go to, that means I'm, I can eat till like 9.30 tonight. So if these get done by 9.30, maybe I'll get to taste them. So I'm putting the uh, the rub on and I can actually touch it because I got a glove. <laughs> Let's really make sure it's on there. So I'm light, light, lightly uh, sprinkling. I mean, it's covered. Make sure it's all covered. So once I get this on there, I'll, um, I still have to start the thing down there, the, the um, smoker. So that, that'll give this time to sort of sit uh, at room temperature with this stuff on it, kind of soak in a little bit. I tried, I tried ordering these a couple times since the first time I got them, and they've always been sold out. I guess it's popular, and I can see why. These are delicious. Oh, after I smoke them, and I take them off, I have this. This is the, uh, this is um, butcher paper. That's what I'm going to wrap them in. Um, the, the online video was talking about foil, but I don't know, I prefer the, the paper at the end. So, this is ready to go down, I, but I gotta go down and start that, that smoker first. Just here, waiting for the coals to get hot. As soon as they're hot, I'll dump them in the thing and put the uh, smoker back together. So we got the, uh, the bottom there. That's 
the coals go, and then we got the middle and then the top. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the coals in. I had some like, uh, some more down underneath. I was gonna dump the hot ones on top of the other ones just so it, you know, would last longer throughout the smoke. But it looks like the ones on the bottom, I guess from the heat from, from the coals above them, that they've caught fire too. So I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and pour it in there now. That's a lot of coals. Maybe I overdid it this time. <laughs> I don't think I have to worry about it running out. <laughs> Be nice and hot. Got my trusty fork to poke it with. I just have to even it out. It's just a little bit piled up here. I can fit in the end. Because inside this, uh, the middle part is a uh, is a water bowl that sort of hangs down. So I gotta make sure it clears. Um, the other thing I gotta do is fit the, uh, the smoke wood on there. This is post oak. I guess I can stick it around the side somehow. See if that works. Ah, fit. Perfect. I have the uh, the extra probe in the side here to give me a temp the internal temperature. Do we have this to brush off? There. The vents are open. Plug in the probe. I gotta put the battery back in there, but I don't want to make you watch that. So, I gotta run up and get the meat. And uh, this thing won't take long to get up to temperature because there's a lot of coals in there. All right, I'm ready to throw the meat on. God, my shins are killing me. It's hard to squat down like this. The thing's up to temperature. And I have to, the meat over here. Side down. And this is the one that's got the the meter probe. It's like a puzzle piece. There we go. Cool. Skies. It's right around 75 degrees. Okay, <laughs> it's like it's 11:15 at night. This took forever, and the cold. I don't know what happened. I don't know if you can see. Tilt that down. It's like the water. Something happened with the water inside. It doused the coals. Um, so anyway, it got within five degrees of 
temperature, so I'm just going to pull it. I don't think I can with it anymore. But they, they looked on, and yeah, they're like, yeah, <laughs> they're more than done. So, I'm going to put them on this butcher paper and we'll wrap them up. And it's way too late for me to eat, so I guess I'm going to have to reheat them tomorrow. I've got this light over here because it's dark. So we're going to place these in here. that off on the close all the vents. Even though the, uh, the coals already got doused. I guess I'll continue this tomorrow. Maybe I'll show it to you real quick up in the kitchen in the light. I'm going to show these to you in the light. Oh, they're still warm. Try to put them away. God, they smell good. I wish I could taste one. see it like jiggling. God, they look so good. They look, look at the juice. <laughs> All right. Well, tomorrow will be fun. Okay, I'm back the next day. I spent the whole day waiting on those um, short ribs to smoke. So they're, they're in the oven right now, reheating. They look so good and I couldn't eat them while well, you saw. <laughs> so right now I've got I've got bacon going ahead of I'm I'm doing that ahead of time because later I'm I'm gonna chop it up and uh, put it in some scrambled eggs and we're gonna make a couple little mini chaffles and have the spare ribs and some chaffles with some scrambled eggs and that's gonna be the meal. So we have all the, the usual suspects. We got the robusta cheese. We have the finely grated parmesan for the for the um, to put right on the waffle maker. I have store bought range free range uh, eggs for the chaffles, but I got a couple of um, duck eggs for the scramble. I have melted butter on the stove. I've got chaffle butter, and then for the scrambled eggs, I got another little container of butt butter, and I got my old trusty Brian Damage coffee cup. I got the red one today. I think it's the first time I've used a red one. I probably should have rinsed it out. Anyway, mmm. You know what's weird? This is a left handed cup, so I, I get to see the logo, but anyone that sees me drinking it doesn't see the logo. So it's weird how they consider this left-handed. I would think it would go that way with the hand over here, but oh well. I'm the only one here, so. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me bake this up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I talked too long. Bake is way done. Okay, I'm going to pull this off. I'll just take this over to it. Well, it's definitely going to be crunchy by the time it comes to cutting it. And there's also some 
really nice bacon grease in there for the eggs. Oh, I do need this. I need to move this over. Get that out of the way. So we're going to do the chocolates. Alright, here we go. We got the eggs. These are nice looking eggs for store-bought. Probably find out that they uh, inject them with dye or something to make them look nice. <laughs> Who knows these days? No, those are free range. They should be good. That's probably why. <laughs> I'm always suspicious of food. Okay, those are nice and scrambled. And I didn't pull out the spices beforehand, so I've got to grab them real quick. We got the ribbon sea salt. Ribbon real salt sea salt. Cinnamon. I probably should have just made the chavels ahead of time too because you've seen me do this several times now. Too good of not made. So I don't really need to take you through this process, do I? Ah, that was too much. Got the extra vanilla and vanilla e. Yeah, really okay, now we got the cheese. This is the Robusto. Just dump it in until it feels right. my second cup so I'm drinking it black I only do the butter in the morning or not in the morning but first cup all right I'm gonna take you over here so you can watch this again that um, uh, smokers of pain it um, I mean it works great the trick is to, just to forget about it and let it go. Okay, I got the Parmesan. But when um, when it involves like a long smoke like that, it never fails. Like some at some point it starts to die. And I have to add to it. Which is always iffy. But last night, it got... What did it get up to? 197? I was trying to hit... Like two, at least 200, but I, I, my target was 203 for the doneness. Okay, there's the chocolate mix, the first bunch. Actually, you know what? This could use some more cheese. It's not quite thick enough. So anyway, it, the, you know, I have my, my app for the uh, thermometer so I can watch it and it kept telling me uh, you know I was watching it and it kept going down lower and lower and I'm like oh man so I go down to check on it oh wait here put this one parmesan on top it went on the bottom and now it's going on top there we go went down to check on it and there's this puddle underneath my smoker and I open the little door and look in and I don't know what if maybe the there's a pan of water in there maybe it boiled over or something and it doused the the, the um, coals so anyway I ended up pulling them out at 197 they weren't quite where I wanted them but that was close and I wasn't going to try to start the thing back up again that whole process okay well that's going we were going to what are we doing? 
I don't know. Here. Let's go back over here. I'm going to cut the bacon. Someday I'm going to get like a fancy camera set up with angles and switches. And... Do they do that? I wonder if people actually do that. They probably do. I've seen some professional ones. Alright, we're just going to use a little knife on this. Okay, we'll chop the bacon. Mmm, bacon grease. But we can't really mix up the scramble until the chocolates are done. They need to be done anyway. They're like the, uh, they're going to go underneath everything, so. out for this chocolate and I think we're just I'm gonna pause you and we'll come back when a couple of those chocolates are done <clears throat> okay I got I've got some extra chocolates over there so we've got plenty um, so I can move on to the duck eggs and we're making a duck egg scramble We don't want to, if this is a bad egg, we don't want to dump a bad egg on top of a good egg. But these eggs are pretty consistent. I think I've only, I think I've only had a couple bad ones. And it's usually like in the off season when she's having trouble getting them. Alright, there's two nice juicy duck eggs. A little bit of salt in there. So. Okay. Let's do a pepper too. Just for a change. Scramble this. And this is the same little thing we had the chocolates in. I was contemplating that last little bit just adding it to the scramble, but um it was, it was actually enough for uh, another chocolate. Chance and poured it in there. Okay, we're adding the bacon. Here's our bacon. Now this, these eggs cook quick in this bacon grease. Pretend you didn't see that. I was supposed to scramble it with the butter. Too busy talking, I'm getting distracted. Bacon grease is just like bam. Okay, now I'm gonna pull these rib, uh, short ribs out. You get to see them as I get to see them. I have them in this this little pan thing. I am going to I'm gonna put them out here. Actually, pull this out. We have this little rack with the, with the ribs on it. I'm just going to flip it like that. Now, 
Can you see that? This is the butcher paper. I have it wrapped in. And look at that. Look at the grease on that thing. Mmm. Okay. Now I got to pull these out. I think it. Man, let's see if I can open this without making a complete mess. I have these stuff. Double wrapped. Oh man, look at these things. Ooh. Just as good as fresh, really. It is time to stage a plate. You know what? I'm gonna put these up on here. You see that? Look at this big thing. Okay, uh, plate. Let's do one of these deals. Sort of a half plate, half bowl. Now, we're gonna start with a couple chaffles. Here ones. Yeah, I'm not going to fit too many of those on, but it'll be okay. I can only come back for seconds. Alright, now. Hmm, which rib do I want? I should just pull the meat off, but I'm going to put the rib on there. Wow, man. They all look good. You know what, it's hard to fit the bones on here too. I'm trying to figure out how to do this right. This looks photo worthy. That's good. Man, I could eat all these. And I need some garnish. I'm gonna grab, I haven't done this in a while. Go with the old, um, where's the label? It's a lumpfish row. Can you read that? Basically, people always ask, ask me what this is. It's basically fish eggs from a lumpfish. And it really, it's just salty. <laughs> so it adds a little bit of salt and color. There we go. We got, we got the short rib, we got the scrambled eggs with the bacon in it, we got the lump fish roe on top of that, and we got two mini chaffles underneath. This is going to be delicious. Voila.